hour. It is my great pleasure to have on the phone here on our line uh, Sir Ward, creator and captain of the Northwest Mass Brigade. So thank you for joining us today. Sure. Thank you for the invite. It is my pleasure. I have been following your story uh, for months now, since uh, probably since you started, and uh, put, putting the uh, posts up online. And uh, you've been a real inspiration to me. I love talking about it, and I was just, I wanted to know more about the Northwest Mass Brigade because I didn't feel that it was getting enough attention, and I wanted to bring attention to it. And so I want to hear what it is. How did it start? Tell us your story. Well, uh, back in March, it was like March 17th, I received a text from my neighbor uh, asking, if I would be uh, able to sew her a couple of cloth masks. And um, I'm like, sure. I had never made masks before. So I said, give me until tomorrow and I'll come up with a few for you. So I got on the internet and I checked out different mask patterns. And um, there were a lot of things about several of them I didn't like. So what I did is I just took the best parts and put it all together and came up with my own. And uh, by the next day, I had handed over, I think it was like six or seven masks to her, and she was just tickled. And what happened is she went to her um, a nursing home where her mother stays, and uh, the workers there were asking her about her mask, and so she said, oh, you know, my neighbor made them for me, you know, she might be willing to make them for you, too. And one thing led to another, and the next thing I know I'm offering to just, donate masks to them and so the request came in that it was a little more than I could probably handle on my own so um, <laughs> I think it was the next day well it was the 18th um, I put a post on the Gig Harbor positive page and saying hey I'm going to be sewing some fabric masks and nobody was really sewing fabric masks at that time and um, a lot of people responded uh, positive, hey, I have time, because they had sh just shut everything down for all of us, stay at home. And um, so the response was positive, and it was negative, too. I had a lot of feedback, you know, saying, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. You're giving people false hope that it protects them. And, you know, so it was coming at me in all directions. And so um, I reached out to my doctor. And uh, through text message, I said, this is what I want to do. Uh, I'm getting requests for masks, but a lot of people t are telling me that they're not going to do anything to protect. And, you know, I says, I don't know what to do. And he said, first of all, follow through and keep doing it. They're going to be needed. And uh, he said, you know, nursing homes, many facilities are running out of uh, masks. They're going to be needing them. And they do, uh, you know, help prevent uh, the droplets from, from um, carrying forward to someone else. So please continue doing what you're doing. Thank you for doing this. So I uh, decided, okay, I guess I'm going to go full board on this. And um, I went to the fabric store, and <laughs> I think I picked up about $500 in fabric and supplies. And I had a lot of it here, too. But the requests were coming in at me so fast, and um, it just it started taking off like wildfire. But all of a sudden, um, I received a call from the Harbor History Museum saying, "Hey, I see you are looking for sewers. Would you mind if we, you know, posted something in our newsletter?" And I'm like, "Sure, go right ahead." Well, the next day, my email, I got up and my email box was just full. I had to scan and scan and scan down because there was so much response. The response was for, from those that were wanting to volunteer to sew. And uh, the response was also from um, a lot of organizations requesting that. And um, so at that point, it's like, I, I really need a lot of help. So I was just asking for anybody and everybody, anybody that knew how to, you know, run social media. Uh, this is something I've never done. I've 
always been in the community um, doing volunteer work it's my life. If I'm not in bed sleeping, I'm usually, you know, advocating to help somebody, something, or do something for, for people. That's just kind of how I am. So, you know, all of a sudden I had this, I started with wanting to just do a few masks for one organization, and the list was growing so fast. <laughs> I, didn't, I really didn't know what was going on. Uh, I had no um, system for this. I, the, my way of keeping things organized, if you want to call that, is um, the little yellow stickums. Okay. They were all over my windows in my house. Um, I have big windows that look out on the water and um, basically the windows were covered. Okay. So I had sections, yeah. So let me ask That's you. That's kind of how it took off. <laughs> yeah, so let me ask a couple questions from, from all of that. So number one, March 17th, your neighbor comes over and asks you to, to make a mask. Now why did she feel that you were the person to go to? Well, I, I I think my whole life I've been the go-to person. Okay. I guess. So I mean, if you talk to anybody that knows me. Yeah. So, so she obviously uh, saw that you were you're you're an exceptional person. But you said that you had no mask making experience in the from the get-go. So it's yeah. it, you know I can see my neighbor coming to me and saying, "Can you make me a mask?" I would look at him and go, well, "What do I look like? A mask maker to you?" Uh, you know, I would never have taken the initiative to go out and learn how to make a mask, and then taken that initiative to go out and make a mask brigade. So, I mean, that, that in, in itself is just incredible. So you start off with that one, and it was, yeah. imagine if she had gone to the next neighbor, if you, or if you hadn't been home, you know, where would we be? I'm one of those people, um, you know, when I grew up as a child, my mother would put a pile of items on the kitchen table on a Saturday morning and tell us to create something. Okay. And so we had to take those items and, and create something. So, um, you know, Karina, my neighbor, came to me because I'm creative. You know, um, anybody that knows me knows that. Okay. So you don't want to go shopping with me. I'll talk you out of buying anything. I'll say, no, 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 we can make it. <laughs> Are you one of the mothers that says, no, we'll go home and make, I'll make a burger better than McDonald's? <laughs> and every kid's like, better than McDonald's? Come on. <laughs> okay. I'm not much of a cook. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you, so you start making the masks. Uh, the demand comes up. Now, how many uh, how many people, you go from zero to how many people do you have now uh, under the mask brigade? Well, within, I think it was within four days, I had over 90 people signed up to volunteer in one wow. way or the other. And, and how do you manage 90 people virtually uh, and and distributing things? Um, it was chaotic. Okay. Um, it was a lot of chaos. I, um, I, I knew um, what I wanted to do, but putting it all together so fast, I, I literally didn't know if I was coming or going. I have a, a lower back injury too, so I mean that kept me. I mean it just held me down somewhat, and um, but I was kind of in a space where it was like out of sight, out of mind. I'm just going to go for it. And I was just like a train out of out of control, and and I would just look through whatever issues I had because I had people coming at me in all directions. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a, a, a old friend of mine who is part of the Seahawkers Booster Club who came on board to help me with the social media and uh, then my best friend from high school uh, down in Southern California, she developed a spreadsheet and a form for people to fill out because everybody's telling me, Phil, you need to do this, Phil, you need to do that. And I'm like, uh, all I wanted to do was make a few maps. <laughs> And so um, I, I had to enlist the help of other people, and um, it was just just been a, a progressive improvement, you know. I mean, at first, if somebody was making deliveries for me or what, you know, I'd hand them money, say, here's gas money, here's toll bridge money, this, that, or the other. Everything was just fly by the seat of your pants. I was helping people, and that's all that mattered to me. Wow. Okay, and so and those, you... Yeah. 
you go from zero masks, you're, uh, and that's March 18th, uh, to mm-hmm. date, you're just under 9,000. Is that my understanding? Yeah, I have, uh, in the queue right now, um, I have 700 more in the queue. I'm working on getting those filled, and as soon as those are filled, it'll be 9,285 masks. Wow. Wow. Now, how do people, do people get to choose these things? Or you just, they say, I want a mask, and you make a mask, and well, they get... What, what happens is um, we have a Facebook page, NW Mask Brigade, and um, there's a button that says sign up. And if you want to request masks, you click that button. If you want to volunteer in any way or donate, you click that that button okay so it it leads you to a form that you fill out no matter what part of northwest mass you want to be a part of whether you're requesting or wanting to help and then it populates the spreadsheet now okay and, i'm grateful yeah. that you put that up because i was almost hesitant i don't want to put a whole bunch of work orders or demand on you uh, what kind of things do you need what what can the public who are listening do to help you well, at this point in time, um, with more people going back to work and things opening up, mm-hmm. um, I've lost a lot of my sewers. So my greatest need right now is to have uh, people sewing. Okay. Um, I, I have fabric. I, I send everything out pre-cut, pre-counted. Uh, we've got quite a system going on here at my house. They walk in. Everything is sanitized at the entrance. And there's a table, they sign up, and there's a little sign-in sheet. So the volunteer puts their name on it, and there's just like a checkbox thing, like how many kits, how many, how much prep work. So I have people in the community that strictly do prep work. They mount beads onto elastic, for instance, and bring that back to me. Um, so the women come in, or the men, because we have, I think, three men sewing. Um, they come in, they pick up their kits in increments of 25, they mark it down, they take it away, they bring it back, finished, and we pile it all up on a table where I count it out and then I ship it out. And, uh, I'm sorry, describe some of the places that you uh, ship to. Um, I've shipped to um, South Carolina, Hawaii, Arizona, California, mainly Washington. Um, and the Gig Harbor area, because at first we were just concentrating on the Gig Harbor area. But I now have a few volunteers in Seattle, um, Redmond, and Kent. Wow. Um, it makes it a little harder because uh, transporting back and forth, um, a lot of people don't want to leave their houses or, you know, I mean, Gig mm-hmm. Harbor is quite a ways from Red- Redmond, sure. you know. So I have a gal, um, she goes by Jen Hawk Haney, and she lives in Kirkland, and she's been my Friday driver. And she gets in her Seahawk Stout car, and she will make a round. She makes the appointments with all the people to have their kits ready and finds out what they need. And so she will drop off kits to them and pick up the finished ones, and she makes her way down to Big Harbor every Friday. Amazing. And uh, drops off the finished ones and picks picks up kits. So it's been really nice having her, but I'm going to be losing her um, pretty soon uh, because, you know, back to work and things like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's been nice. So it's, it's nice to have a system where you've got different people for different things. We're kind of a fine-oiled machine at this point <laughs> what other than of, needing sewers. I'm sorry. What, what kind of advice would you offer if someone who was, say, listening right now and was inspired by you or maybe had followed your story, uh, wanted to do something on their own, uh, wanted to start up something like you started up, what advice would you offer that person as far as what have you learned from going from kind of zero to hero in a matter of three months? Well, I think that um, my, my first advice... Hey there. That we've had some kind of disconnect uh, versus the the Century Line, but we've got Phil back from Northwest Mass Brigade. Uh, thank you for bearing with us on that one, Phil. Appreciate that. Yes. 
And so my question to you before we got disconnected was what kind of advice would you offer to uh, people who were thinking about going into something like this, an endeavor of, of great endeavorness, uh, and what kind of lessons have you learned? Um, I would, what I've learned is um, uh, record things, um, get yourself set up with a spreadsheet. It's uh, much easier to keep track of who you've given masks to and who's requested them as opposed to sifting through a lot of little stick -em notes and little pieces of paper. Um, so, you know, set it up to where there's a form that's filled out that generates a, uh, a spreadsheet. And then it's just a matter of getting um, other people to, to help you. The Gig Harbor community has been incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, if it, this is not Phil Ward uh, doing Northwest Mass. I simply started it with a, just a little spark, and the Gig Harbor community took it from there. Uh, but you North definitely West are Mass, the leader. You are definitely the leader. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I... I'm kind of like the center point, you know, that they check in with, and I just kind of keep it organized somewhat. Um, I, I do have Holly Booth. Uh, she is, uh, lives here in Gig Harbor, and she runs the, um, the, the Gig Harbor uh, Hungry um, for Health group here in Gig Harbor. And she is the one who handles my spreadsheet and, and all the emails. And if, if this wasn't for her being here, to help me, there's no way that I could do this. Um, three days a week, I have people that come to the house. Uh, the house is open from 10 to 6, and the volunteers are able to bring the mask they've completed and pick up new kits. I provide them with sewing machine needles, thread, anything that they need. Um, but I mean, what I've learned is you reach out to the community and you're going to find that there are a lot of people out there just like you. They want to help in one way or the other. They just don't know which direction to go or what to do. I never in a million years would have expected that I would be at 9,000 masks distributed out of my home. And actually, Spencer, it's more than that because at the beginning, I did not keep good notes at all. Gotcha. I mean, like I said, it was chaotic. Yeah. So I distributed hundreds of masks before the numbers that we have here. The numbers you see that we put out are the numbers from the time we started keeping track. After you said, someone said, we should really be keeping track of this. <laughs> well, it was overwhelming. It was literally overwhelming. There were times when there was like, you know, 2,000 masks in the queue needing to be filled. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know. And um, I just basically, I can't sit and sew all day because my lower back just doesn't allow me to do that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I, I stay busy, you know, with random things, answering questions, talking to volunteers, working to them through issues with their sewing machines. Um, I'm just kind of their check-in person. Um, I have people that cut the fabric for us, that count. My granddaughter, 12 years old, is even involved. I taught her how to sew because of Northwest Math. So, okay, so now that, that leads to two questions. Number one, uh, you, you've told us that you need sewers. Mm -hmm. So, um, how, are there sewing organizations out there? Because I, I won't say sewing's a dying art. But there are, I mean, I always, I'm looking for like someone to put a button on or I got a patch that I want on a hat or something. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea where to go to get something sewed. So uh, are there clubs that are out there? I mean. You know, I, I don't know. I do know that there are quilters. Okay. And um, there are several women that have volunteered for me and continue to volunteer uh, for me. And they are quilters. And uh, I, I don't know. I'm sure there's some type of club or whatever out there. Like quilting There club. are so many quilting clubs and what. But there's so many people out there sewing masks. I, I'm not, my little group is not the only one. Right. And um, I have, like yesterday, I had a lady 
want to do donate some fabric, but when she got here, I found out that she was doing pajamas and various other things for foster kids and stuff. And so I had the type of material in my stash that I could give to her because I can't use it for masks. They're, it's too heavy and mm -hmm. what? They're making backpacks for foster kids and things. So, you know, when you do something like this, you end up meeting a lot of other people in your community doing a lot of charitable work, and you all just kind of help each other. Do you want to... I'm sorry. Communicating. Do you want to recognize any of those groups that you can think of off the top of your head? Oh, gosh. I don't know uh, the names, uh, the actual names okay. of, of the charitable groups that they are involved in. Uh, we just start talking, and they t I say, well, what, what supplies do you need? And they'll tell me, and I'm like, oh, I have a box over here. Take it. Okay. <laughs> you know? So um, I, I wish I did know. Um, it's the gal here that contacted me. She, she, she wasn't a volunteer with Northwest, but she heard about me and thought, and somebody said, well, contact Phil Ward. She may know of someone you can reach out to to fix your machine because her machine had broken, and she was sewing pajamas little kids in hospitals and little hats for cancer patients and um, so she reached out to me just requesting you know how to find somebody to fix a sewing machine and we started talking that way so uh, she gave me fabric and uh, for a mask and I gave her fabric for backpack so uh, you know, that's kind of and that, if that someone um, yeah. let's say someone like myself who wasn't a sewer and doesn't have any sewing skills but wants to mm -hmm. donate, wants to help out. Uh, I see the mm -hmm. sign up uh, thing on the on the Mass Brigade uh, Facebook page. Mm -hmm. But is there uh, an opportunity to donate money or materials? How do we how do we get to you? Yeah, um, you 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 click on the sign up button, or you can send an email to nwmassbrigade at gmail dot com. Okay. And Holly handles all of that. Um, I didn't want to get into um, collecting a lot of donations mm -hmm. and stuff. I was just a citizen starting to make masks, and so I'm not an official like nonprofit or anything. So I don't want to get in the habit of collecting money from people. Sure. Although we've spent quite a bit of money yeah. um, on supplies, so they, they're welcome to donate um, through um, through just contacting us at nwmaskbrigade at gmail dot com. For those people that want to physically do something, sometimes I have just prep work, okay. or there are times when I have just counting, or uh, if somebody has been a sewer and they know how to cut, and they have a rotary cutter and a, um, and a mat, and their machine is down, they just want to cut fabric, I definitely could get people to cut fabric. So there's a lot of little things. For a while there, I had my neighbors ironing for me because I get fabric donated or even when I go and buy fabric there's you know kinks in it and so it has to be ironed out so I had my whole neighborhood ironing there for a while that's awesome they just come in and grab something so there's always something small that, uh, somebody can do or if they don't know how to sew but they don't mind getting in their car and you know doing some pickups or drop-offs that's beneficial. I mean, Jen Hawk's been doing it. I mean, you know, I do give her money because she's that's a long way. And she's driving all over. But, um, you know, there's always little ways to help. Yes, just, just dropping off um, the completed request. Um, I had um, Brian Duran, he's the president of the Southbound Seahawkers. He's made a couple of trips where he's driven from Puyallup to my house, picked up like maybe eight different um, organization, you know, requests that are filled, and he will take it. University Place, Tacoma, Puyallup, Graham, and just drop off at the various places. So we try to do it that way because I've spent hundreds of dollars on shipping, and I'm trying to avoid that if it's local. Yeah. So, if somebody wants to just help out by just making some deliveries, that would be beneficial as well. Um, I got a question because I've, I've made an observation here now. I love your positivity, and you, you seem like a very can-do um, kind of person. And so, uh, and you seem very optimistic, and I like that. 
Uh, and so you had told me that there had been people who had been naysayers and who had been negative mm -hmm. about uh, this, this, you know, doing this. How did you mm -hmm. deal with that mentally? Because it must have hurt you. You know, it, it would hurt anyone, I think, to have someone say your mm -hmm. ideas are silly. Um, how did you get yeah. through that? And had anyone come back to you and said, I was wrong? No one's come back to say I was wrong. Okay. Well, they're <laughs> and, thinking it. Um, there may be, yeah. Um, and and a, a, a couple of them were actually good friends of mine. And, I mean, I really got blasted. But there was enough comment on the positive side that said, please don't listen to the naysayers. Continue doing what you're doing. It's wonderful. Okay. Uh, there is more positive than negative, and I, I think I mentioned um, when the naysayers were attacking me because there was an all-out attack, I immediately contacted my doctor, and I said, hey, I, I'm feeling mad, this is what I want to do, but what are your thoughts on this? You know, this is what people are telling me, and once uh, he said, go for it, He's at Peninsula Family Medical. I said, that's it. That's all I need to know. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. I'm just going to go for it, you know. And I mean, like I said, I can never, ever. I mean, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll make maybe 500 masks, you know. I mean, when it got really crazy, you know, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I'll make 500 masks. But look at us. We're going to be pushing 10,000. I know. And I, I, it's hard for me to comprehend I mean, people make com comments towards me positive, and they're just blown away, and they say, oh, how wonderful you are and all, but it's hard for me to kind of wrap my brain around that because I, I was home. I mean, he, he, here's what reaching out and helping someone else can do for you. Prior to the, the text message from my neighbor, I was in a very depressed state of mind. And we all have our ups and downs in life, and, and, and I'm, I'm one of those that has had those. And I was very depressed and um, feeling very defeated after losing a job after 31-plus years to a lower back injury. And um, I was just having a hard time coping, having a hard time getting out of bed, having a hard time knowing what my purpose in life was. I was really, really struggling. And on antidepressants, I get the text from my friend to help. And immediately, I'm one of those type of people, I will be there for you. So, you know, that kind of pulls you out of yourself mm -hmm. and your four walls, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So that led from one thing to the other. I had no time to think about how depressed, disappointed, how unhappy I was with having lost my job, I had no time to think about that because there were people that needed me. There were people that needed masks. There were people begging me for masks. The requests were coming in so fast. I mean, I think you and everybody else remember what that time was like yeah. when and there was the shutdown and nobody was had masks and the, the doctors it, it was just it was sad it it actually broke my heart because i thought here are these nurses and doctors and caregivers out there on the front line they don't have a choice to stay home they don't have a choice to stay six feet away they are hands-on and they are begging for help begging and if all I could do was make a few masks to at least help a few. To me, that gave me purpose. And so I had, I felt like I had to do it. It's the least I can do considering what they were going through. I mean, if I'm sick, if you're sick, who's going to be there to help us? They are. Yep. No questions asked. So for me to sit home and just maybe watch TV or lay in my bed feeling depressed and defeated? No. I got up. I did something for somebody else, and that fed my soul, and it pulled me out of depression. And I almost, I almost, so I would suggest to anybody, you know, if you're feeling defeated, if you're feeling depressed in any way, 
I mean, life has a lot of hard knocks, but what I have found in my life and anybody that knows me knows my whole life I've been a server. I will be there to help anybody at any given time for the most part, sometimes too giving. But at this point in time in my life, Northwest Mass saved me. It literally saved me. And I'm, I'm grateful for all the awesome people that I met in this community, near and far. And, you know, my whole thing now is, well, you know, I'm not working, right? <laughs> so I'm home. So if people want to use my house, if we want to continue using my house to be the central point for Northwest Mass, and there are still organizations out there that need our help, then we're just going to keep going. And the concentration right now seems to be more towards charities. There are a lot of charities out there helping those that are in need. They're feeding them or, or what, and the, the, the people are coming to them and they don't have masks. Yeah. I have a feeling mask need is going to continue to go up, especially once we get into the fall uh, and see, oh, start seeing kids in schools, if that's even allowed. Yeah. So I was going to ask, you know, where, where is the, where, is there an end to this or what's the future? What's the goal? But, um, you know, <laughs> sadly, I have to say, I think you're going to be busy for a while. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. I mean, granted, yes, I, my house is small, um, but um, I, I have stations uh, and I do have a few friends that will come and hang out here all day long and so I have two tables with sewing machines. I have a big six foot table that's a cutting table. I have an ironing uh, station and of course I have the whole entryway which is basically uh, for volunteers that come and go. We do our social distancing. We have tape on the floors. Um, I have the Clorox. I mean I've, I've gone through so much, you know, spray Clorox and paper towels and sanitizers, but all of that stuff is in place. I want everybody to feel safe when they come here. And um, it's just, you know, I don't really have a home. I have more of um, a workshop or a shipping <laughs> warehouse in a sense, you know, because there's- But it feels like home. home. It, it's home, it, yeah, it feels at home, but uh, yeah, it, it's a mess. <laughs> But, you know, it's all for a good cause. Yep. And um, it keeps me focused on doing something um, with all the negative things in, in the world um, and, you know, sometimes in our own lives. Uh, to have something that gives back and to know that you're making a difference, mm -hmm. even if it's just one mask at a time. Well, it's worth it. So, well, and I wanted to say, I think, I think the mask is almost a metaphor. I think, I think you are the inspiration, and the Northwest Mask Brigade, and all the people who have joined you and are, are participating in this are the inspiration. The masks are the product, but uh, I think, I think the what you're really giving is hope, and um, and like I said, inspiration. Um, you know, just showing that a you care, and 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 having mm -hmm. see seen someone out there caring is huge mm -hmm. because people need to see other people caring uh, and then yeah. um, that you're doing something and then there's the, the I myself who have no skills and have no mm -hmm. uh, I shouldn't say no skills but don't have you know skills that I think that I could use to apply to help people uh, can take that idea and say no what Spencer that's wrong you do have something that you can do to help people mm -hmm. and um, you just need to find a sill out there who will guide you and show you the way, and, um, and and that's huge. And so, you know, my hats off to you. Again, I like I said, I've been following your story. Uh, it's it's helped me get up and get out of bed in the morning. And uh, I'm grateful to have this time to have you on the air. I wanted to make sure other people got to hear your story. I wanted to hear your story. I, I was curious. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I'd like to have you back. Um, is there anyone? Is there anything else? Because it's now getting almost 12:37. Um, I should probably let you get back to work. Um, but is there anything else you want to close with or a shout out to well, somebody? Well, you know, for those out there listening, uh, especially those that have signed up to be team members with Northwest Mass Brigade, my heartfelt thanks. Um, sorry. 
this has been um, a labor of love and you know we you know as human beings all have something to give and um, if we just step outside ourselves and so my heart felt thanks goes out to um, you know the harbor history museum uh, and to Karina and for all those that kind of catapulted me up into this I mean there were times that I resisted like what am I doing I need to shut this down uh, but when I have volunteers that come to me and say thank you so much for doing this I love doing this and I love knowing that I can you know do something that helps other people I want to just keep going and I want to just keep helping I'm so glad you're here when you know people say things like that to me then I know I'm probably right where I need to be yeah so yeah. Um, I just thank everybody and you know if anyone wants to help uh, get in touch with us at nwmassbrigade at gmail.com we, you know, we could probably use your help in one way or the other, small or big. It doesn't matter. We'll take it. Got it. And I just thank you, Spencer, for letting me have this time and recognizing what we're doing out there. It, it's my pleasure. It's my honor to um, to be able to recognize you. I'm sorry that I'm, a, I'm so far. I hope I'm not the only one. Uh, and I, I know people out there who are following the story online as well as like I am are probably uh, saying the same thing. But uh, I wanted to reach out to you and let you know that you were making a difference in my life and you're making a difference in every other one, or in other people's lives, one mask at a time. And uh, to keep doing that, and um, it's, it's, you're doing more than just making masks. You're doing a lot can more I, Can that. I say one more little thing? Sure. If there are any organizations out there, uh, if you are a charita, charitable organization, and you are you are in the forefront with those in need and you find that many don't have a mask please reach out to us put in your request for masks because if you have a small stockpile of masks on hand then when you're uh, helping someone you'll have a mask to give to them and we would love to be a part of that and uh, supply you with those masks so reach out request those masks and we'll fill those requests as soon as we can all right and i'll be sure to give out the, uh, the email and tell people how to sign up uh, throughout our broadcasts into the future and i hope to have you back thank you spencer you have a great day you too enjoy this nice weather <laughs> as i look out my windows amongst the fabric <laughs> there you go okay thank, thank you so you. much again that was Bill ward captain of the Northwest Mass Brigade and an inspirational person, uh, an amazing person, uh, and, and a part of a group of amazing people uh, who are doing great things. Again, if you want to sign up and receive a mask, you can go on their Facebook page at Northwest Mass Brigade. Uh, if you want to donate time, effort, material, um, I don't think she's looking for money, although she should be because she's putting in a lot of her own. Uh, you can go to online and send them an email at North w NW Mask Brigade, uh, and that's B R I G A D E for those who don't know how to spell brigade. I didn't uh, at gmail.com. So Northwest Mask Brigade at gmail.com is the email. And again, uh, again, thank you, Sill, for taking time again out of your day um, and letting us hear your story. And uh, I assume uh, we're going to see more people like Sill come out of the woodworks because of people like Sill. And uh, and that's my goal, is to spread as much inspiration to the world as we can because uh, we could use some right now. And um, anyone who's doing something great uh, deserves to have their attention uh, or get some attention in my book. So that's what this radio station is here to do. If you know someone who is like Sill um, or has you know benefited from her masks, Give us a call, 253-857-3589. We want to hear that story. We want to hear your story. And we want to hear what you're doing in our community uh, that's helping others in our community uh, and get you some attention as well. So, again, thanks to Sill. Thanks to Northwest Mass Brigade. We're going to have the mayor of Gig Harbor here uh, 